be, unless you don't mind, I don't know, but you don't want to be the raisin or the chocolate drop in a sea of milk. black elwoods coming back at you with another video if you're a friend to the court welcome back if you're new here and like what you see go ahead and like comment and subscribe a lot of y'all been watching my videos but not subscribing and you want to be a friend of the court or are you trying to be in the gallery because honestly if you're trying to be in the gallery just go watch divorce court what you're doing here go ahead and subscribe anyway moving on i've been on twitter and i've seen everybody getting accepted to the little law schools congratulations right but now you got all these acceptance letters it's come down it comes down to figure out where you want to go can I hear my son in the background I apologize for once I'm not making a video in the middle of the night back on topic um so how to pick a law school different people have different priorities you have to figure out is rank more important to you keeping your debt down job placement location all that plays a factor and for me i felt like this time around because remember i'm a non-traditional student i've been here twice i picked differently my first time around the school i picked gave me no money but it was higher ranked so i went rank wise would not recommend that unless you're in the area you want to practice they offer the programs you want to practice in as far as like internships externships um clinics make it make sense it has to make sense to you my school did not make sense to me i don't want to practice in the state that i went to school in i knew that off rip granted you don't have to practice in the state that you go to school in it's the most sense because you're building connections with your networking your school's curriculum is geared towards that state's bar. So a low key, it'd be a waste of time to go to school in freaking like, let's say California, but you want to practice in Florida. Just go to school in Florida. Especially the California being the hardest bar, make your job easier for you. So second time around, I chose, because I'm in debt. Remember that school didn't give me any money. I didn't even finish. So this time around, I chose who gave me the most money. Now I'm sitting here miserable <laughs> thinking about transferring next semester, but that's a different story. Because, yes, they gave me money. The location is decent. I don't really want to practice here, but if I had to, I would be okay with that. But they don't offer any clinics or really any classes of what I want to practice in. I'm interested in trademarks. I didn't, granted, I didn't know that Ooh, what is this? until after I started school. But now I'm stuck because they don't offer anything of that nature. If your school does not offer what you want to practice in, is it really worth going to? That's another thing I said, prioritize. And that's why sometimes it's better to, yeah. You didn't give me money, but you offer the program I want to practice in. Or, you know, vice versa. You did give me money. Or you didn't give me, or, what did I say first time? You didn't give me money, but you had the program I want to practice in. Versus, you did give me money, but you don't have what I want to practice in. It has to, it's a trade-off sometimes. And sometimes you have to sacrifice your debt. But it'll pay off if you find a job. Speaking of, please make sure your school offers some sort of OCI, like student service. Make sure they'll be able to find you a job after you graduate. Granted, this time around, I'm on Zoom University, so I'm giving my school a pass. But, baby, they haven't even helped me with an internship they had not discussed an internship if it had not been for my first time around i would even know to apply for an internship that's how out of the loop my school has been so i'm looking at them kind of crazy like if you don't even offer me help with an internship how can i trust you to find a job for me 
or even let me know what jobs are out there. That's important. You want to be able to find a job after you go into all this debt. Granted, it's an investment, but I want my investment to pay off, be returned back to me. If you're not yielding tangible dividends, what are you doing? Wasting time and money. Think about that. And then also, does your school or the school that you got into require bar classes? Is your bar preparation included in your price? Figure that stuff out too because some three years are going to come by like this. You're either going to take out loans or they tell you to save up out of each semester, but is that realistic for you? You have to think about all that. If they're not requiring bar classes, what are they doing? And check your school's bar passes rate. My God. The ABA releases reports every year about, like, you know, gender, what races go there, acceptance rates where these uh, people are coming from schools, or transfer rates, all that. Check it. No way. I want to see the receipts. It'll give you all the tea that they're not giving you up front, but they're required to disclose to the government, if that makes sense. Look at it. I think it's called... Some, some, some report. It comes out every year. You'll figure it out when you look for it, but look at it. Because at the end of the day, you're investing in yourself. Make it worth it. So I say I'd like to say this. I could probably narrow this down to five major points. One, is your school in a state you want to practice in? If not, are you okay with that? Two, price. Are you okay with going into debt or do you want to go where they're giving you the uh, money? Are you going where the money is? If that's not important to you, rank, that can be interchangeable to from the top three. Is rank more important to you or staying out of debt? Four, does your school's curriculum and classes align with what you want to do in life? And if you're not sure, do they have externships and clinics to get your feet wet for you to even find out that's important and five oh my biggest one make sure how do i put this look at who they accept you don't want to be unless you don't mind i don't know but you don't want to be the raisin or the chocolate drop in a sea of milk racial diversity is important um, it is very important at least to me especially in classes like criminal procedure, criminal law, those discussions need people from all walks of life. If your school was nothing but white people, no offense to y'all, but it's something to think about. It's something to think about. Go where you're wanted and not where they just, they took you because you, they need the diversity points. Because you'll know, you'll know. And then you're gonna be uncomfortable. But that's all a part of you doing your research, too, and talking to uh, current students. I forgot about that one, but that should be three, me number one or two. Because imposter syndrome is real. And if nobody's in there, on, not going to say on your, in your corner, but then discussions get heated. Professors' biases are real. You're going to want that support from people that look like you. You might not see it now, but you'll see it. That's if you're a minority student, you're gonna want that support. Reach out to your uh, school's bolsa, and if they don't have one, you might not wanna go there. But anyway, that's all I have for you today. If you like what you saw, like, comment, and subscribe. And you know, good luck on your law school journey. We're trying to get this percentage up. Only 5% of lawyers are black. We're trying to raise that. So congratulations for getting accepted. You do belong in this legal field even when it doesn't feel like it even when you feel like everyone else is smarter than you y'all are in the same place remind yourself that you you deserve to be here you are here for a reason and stand in that i'm gonna get off my soapbox y'all have a great rest of your day and wish you luck